too many people for the energy resources, for the food resources, land, water. It's more than 6.5 billion. And the World Health Organization reports that we already have 3.7 billion people who are malnourished on Earth. This is nearly 60% of the world's population are malnourished on Earth. And it does relate to this whole question of uh, biofuels. Now, we in the U.S. are blessed with an abundance of a variety of foods. The average American consumes 2,200 pounds of food per person per year. Our green plants collect only one-tenth of one percent of the solar energy reaching the plants during the year. Photovoltaics collects 200 times the solar energy that our green plants, uh, and I'm not being critical of green plants, they've been around for billions of years. Back in 1850, we were primarily dependent on wood as our primary fuel. And in fact, we had shortages of wood way back in 1850. We're overusing resources in the United States. The bar on your left indicates the quantity of fossil energy that we use annually in the United States, which is approximately 100 quads, and a quad has 10 to the 15th BTUs, but that's not uh, crucial. The bar on your right indicates the quantity of solar energy captured by all the green plants in the United States. I mean all of agriculture, all of forestry, all of grasses, lawns, and so forth. We are burning or using twice as much fossil energy per year in the U.S. than the green plants collect annually in the U.S. And we can't continue to do that. Uh, uh, use of corn to produce ethanol. Now, first of all, of course, to produce corn ethanol, you have to grow the corn. And it takes 14 different energy inputs to produce an acre of corn. And roughly, it takes about 100 gallons of oil equivalents to produce an acre of corn. It's really quite energy intensive. And also, to, it takes approximately 22 pounds of corn to produce one gallon of ethanol. That 22 pounds of corn, of course, is food that we are putting in our gas tanks and so forth, and that has the implications that I mentioned early. 28,000 kilocalories is approximately one gallon of gasoline. So it's taking one gallon of gasoline to produce one gallon of ethanol. When you have, when you're through the fermentation, that is taking the corn, ground it, and put the uh, uh, yeast in to ferment this corn, you end up with, and after you've distilled the, uh, uh, eth the ethanol out of the water, and incidentally you have 10% ethanol and 90% water, and it takes a lot of energy to get that ethanol out of the water and concentrate it. In any case, you can't burn 95% ethanol if you're going to mix it with gasoline. You have to further energy inputs to concentrate that ethanol into 99.5% so that it, you can mix it with gasoline, and that takes more energy. Now then, I looked at the energetics of this, and I told you earlier that for every gallon of ethanol that you produce, requires 28,000 kilocalories. And uh, the 28,000 kilocalories, is, as I mentioned earlier, is about one gallon of gasoline, the energy in one gallon of gasoline. A gallon of ethanol has 19,400 uh, kilocalories present in it. So, in fact, it's taken 40% more energy to produce that gallon of ethanol 
than we actually are getting out. Or another way to look at it, it takes 1.5 gallons of gasoline to produce one gallon of ethanol. Uh, you will see, in fact, uh, very uh, many publications that are talking about the uh, positive return we get when we do produce ethanol. And the way that these pro-ethanol people are able to achieve a positive return is that they omit the farm labor, they omit farm machinery, they omit irrigation, uh, they uh, omit the energy required to produce the hybrid corn and various other, and they omit the environmental impacts that I'll tell you about in a uh, moment. Uh, and then take excess credit after you get through making the, converting the corn into ethanol, you have a byproduct left called distillers grain that you can feed to cattle. But distillers grain is not energy in the terms that you can put it into your gas tank. And so, but they're taking credit for all of this so that they can make ethanol look like a winner. And but the environmental impacts are enormous. It takes approximately 1,700 gallons of water to produce one gallon of ethanol. Most of that is in the, in the growing of the corn. Now corn production causes more soil erosion than any other, so, any other crop grown in the nation. It uses more nitrogen fertilizer than any other crop grown in the nation. And in fact, the nitrogen that is leaking from our corn production is going down the Mississippi into the Gulf of Mexico, and it's the prime cause of the dead zone in the Gulf of Mexico that's the size of New Jersey. Then corn production uses more insecticides than any other crop, more herbicides than any other crop grown, and uh, these two uh, uh, in, uh, pesticides are causing major environmental uh, impacts. And then in the production of ethanol, it releases enormous quantities of carbon dioxide contributing to the global warming problem. First of all, I told you that it takes 1.4 gallons of gasoline equivalents to produce a gallon of ethanol, and so you've added more carbon dioxide there. But number two, in the fermentation process, that is when the yeasts are fermenting the corn to produce ethanol, they release enormous quantities of carbon dioxide. So you've got two major sources of carbon dioxide being released uh, from this ethanol uh, production. And then when ethanol is burned in the car, ozone and various other pollutants are re uh, released into the atmosphere and, and it cause uh, human problems as well as other environmental problems. Well, that's a, a shot of soil erosion. And then for every gallon of ethanol that is produced, there are 12 gallons of sewage effluent that have to go into the sewage system. And this is a major environmental cost. Now, in the US today, and I'm using DOE or Department of Energy numbers, Last year, we produced five billion gallons of ethanol, which certainly sounds like a lot of fuel. However, and it took 20% of U.S. corn to make this ethanol. And then you ask the question, what does five billion gallons of ethanol mean to total petroleum use in the United States? It's 1%. Is that making us oil independent? 1%. And then if we use 100% of U.S. corn to produce ethanol, it would provide us with 7% of our total petroleum use. Is, in fact, if we used all the ethanol produced in Brazil, you'll hear about it in a moment, and all the ethanol produced in the United States, it would provide us with 2% of our total petroleum use. Now, when we're converting corn into ethanol, we're taking corn away from livestock production, beef, pork, chickens, eggs, and, and so forth. And this is increasing the cost of food uh, to you as well as the people in, in, in the world who depend on grains as their uh, food. To produce ethanol, and the reason for ethanol production from corn in the United States, and actually in Brazil too, is subsidies. 
the government is subsidizing the production of corn ethanol. And it's costing $6 billion of your money, tax money, to produce this ethanol. And then you're paying an extra money, as I told you, for higher prices of meat, milk, and eggs. Subsidies for a gallon of ethanol are 90 times, and I want to emphasize that, are 90 times the subsidies per gallon of gasoline. I'm not for any subsidies. The, the burning of corn has this ethical issue that I mentioned earlier, that there are 3.7 billion people who are malnourished on earth. And the burning of corn, 22 pounds per gallon of ethanol, is, I think, uh, a, a disaster in, in those terms.